Hello and welcome to the Longevity Learning Lab. Today we're going to talk about one of the most important aspects of the welding world. That's safety. So safety is paramount importance in what we do in welding. There's many different ways that we can get hurt, we can harm others, we can get ourselves cut, burned, something in our eye, or even worse, if we don't operate in a safe and efficient manner. So today we're going to take a look at some of those important aspects of what's commonly referred to as PPE or personal protective equipment. So my best reference whenever I'm looking or trying to understand more about safety in the welding environment, I always take a look at ANSI Z49.1. So that's readily available on the web and in other locations but that's a general safety practices for in and around the welding environment developed by the American Welding Society and the American National Standards Institute. So that's a great basis or background whenever we're concerned about safety and we're not sure how to address it or how to approach it, that's our background or that's our foundation to work from. So please always reference that and take a look at that prior to doing any welding work that you intend to do. The first piece of personal protective equipment we're going to talk about today is safety glasses. So safety glasses are important to protect our two eyes and our eyes are really important in the welding world because if we can't see what we're doing uh, then we're going to have a difficult time welding. So make sure to always protect your eyes and take good care of them because there's many hazards in the welding world that we can get damaged both from the area of bright light, flying objects, sparks, dirt, dust, and all kinds of other things that we can get in our eyes. So make sure that you get a good pair of safety glasses that fit well and that are comfortable. So that's one of the things I hear often from many people is, I don't like to wear my safety glasses. My safety glasses are over here on the bench. They're down in the bottom of my toolbox, but they're not on my face. And I ask the person, how come you're not wearing your safety glasses? And they say that they're not comfortable and they either squeeze my nose or they pinch my ears or they rub on my forehead and they get fogged up real quick. So my suggestion to you is, is our heads are all different. Some of us have wider heads, some of us have taller heads, some of us have a big nose, some of us have a small nose, some of us have big ears, and some of us have small ears. So test out safety glasses and find a pair that are comfortable for you and that fits your face and that work for you. Because if they're not comfortable and they're not efficient uh, at, at fitting onto your face and, and being comfortable, uh, then it's really difficult to wear them in a long-term basis. And that's something that we just have to get used to if we're going to be in the welding world. We need to wear safety glasses, they need to be on our face, and they need to be in place all the time. There's many workplaces that will not tolerate not, wear, not wearing safety glasses. So please make sure that you get some that work for you and that fit. The other key thing or important aspect of safety glasses is, is either on the frame or inside the lens, you'll look around and what you're looking for is the markings that say ANSI Z87.1. So Z87.1 explains that the safety glasses have met a minimum standard that has been set by the industry to operate safely in a workplace environment. So get your pair of safety glasses that fit your face and that are comfortable for you and that'll be the first step to being safe in the welding environment. Okay, the next piece of personal protective equipment we're going to take a look at is gloves. So gloves are very important in the welding world. They protect our hands from sharp objects. They protect our hands from getting burnt, from coming in contact with hot objects. So make sure that you get a pair of gloves that fits your hands and that will make your hands so that they're comfortable, they don't pinch your fingers, they give plenty of room to to move around and to flex and depending upon the process that we're going to use uh, we're going to want to select some gloves that match the process and help us understand or help us feel the handle, the electrode holder, 
the gun, whatever it is that we might be holding on to, the better we can come in contact with it and protect our hands, the better off we will. So here I've got a pair of gloves that are intended for gas tungsten arc welding. So a pair of gloves like this, the important aspects of those are is that they're relatively thin. Uh, they're made out of some supple material that allow me to bend my fingers and to move them around. Uh, efficiently so that I can hold the torch in one hand and be able to feel and manipulate and feed, feed the filler rod in the other hand. So having a thin pair of gloves uh, that is comfortable and has good sensitivity to the touch is important with gas tungsten arc welding. When I'm going to do some gas metal arc welding, I don't necessarily need to have quite the uh, sensitive touch that I do when I'm working with gas tungsten arc welding. Plus, Gas metal arc welding throws off a lot more sparks uh, and has a lot more hazards that we could uh, hand up with down our sleeve. So we're going to make sure that we get some gloves that are a little bit more thicker. It's also important in any type of welding glove that we get that we have one that has a long gauntlet on the edge of it here so that it comes up and covers over the end of our sleeves. If we have a short glove and we're doing some work, it's very easy for the sparks to get down and inside the glove and burn your hand. So that's the whole goal here is, is we're trying to protect our hands. We don't want them cut up, we don't want them burnt up, and we need to protect those from all those hot and sharp surfaces. So a gas metal arc welding or a MIG welding glove uh, is good for uh, something that's a little bit more heavier duty than gas tungsten arc welding, uh, but uh, uh, these will work just fine for doing gas metal arc welding and light fabrication. Then if we're going to get into some flux core arc welding or some heavier stick welding or shielded metal arc welding, we're going to get a pair of these heavier gauntlet type gloves here uh, that are have more padding, uh, they have more heat resistive material both in the palms and in the finger areas, they have much more insulation in them. They now, this is much less sensitive and I would not want to use this for gas tungsten arc welding because I just cannot feel the, the gloves or feel the uh, torch body or feel the uh, filler metal like I can with the shielded metal arc welding or uh, the gas tungsten arc welding gloves here. So personal protective equipment, a pair of gloves is what you're looking for. Okay, the next piece of personal protective equipment we're going to take a look at is the welding hood. So welding hoods come in all different sizes and shapes and colors uh, and you can select one that best suits your needs uh, but the important aspects of the welding hood is is that it has at least a number 10 lens inside of it when we look through it. So we need to protect our eyes from the bright light of the arc the ultraviolet and infrared radiation that's coming off of that. So a welding hood is what we want to have. The welding hood should have at least a number 10 lens in it. So there are many different charts that we can consult, uh, many ANSI charts there that tell us what the darkness or what the tint or what the shade is in the welding hood needs to be depending upon the amperage that we're operating with. So I recommend to most people that a number 10 lens is the minimum that you want to have when you're doing welding to safely protect your eyes from the bright light from the arc. So having a welding hood is important. The other aspect is, is making sure that you keep your safety glasses on underneath your welding hood. Because when we lift up our welding hood, we never know what's going on right next to us. Somebody may be ready to start a grinder. Somebody may be ready to strike their arc. And there may be something hot, sharp, or a flying object coming in our direction and we want to make sure that our eyes are protected when we lift our welding hood up. So make sure that you keep your safety glasses on underneath your welding hood. Another important piece of personal protective equipment that a lot of people overlook is actually the clothes that they wear when they do the welding. So we want to make sure that we have something that has some long sleeves on it and something that's able to button up tight around our collar. That helps us avoid being exposed to any kind of bright lights that might be generated from the arc and also will protect us from any hot flying objects that might be coming our way. So making sure that we have a jacket or some type of shirt that's comfortable uh, and gives us freedom of movement to be able to work around and do the work that we're trying to do uh, will be helpful. 
It's also important that if we're doing heavier work and especially if we're working in the overhead position or vertical and there may be a tendency for sparks to come down on our forearms or arms or in our shoulder regions that we might want to consider getting a leather jacket uh, that has leather sleeves on it or may encompass the whole body area made out of leather. So some people like those. Uh, other people find them to be a little bit more cumbersome, a little bit heavier, uh, and a little bit hotter to wear. So depending upon your work environment and where you're working at, you'll have to make a selection as to what welding jacket works best for your needs. The other thing that we need to consider is, is that we need to have some long pants on that come down and cover up over the top of our shoes or boots to make sure that any kind of sparks that come off of the work or the work table don't end up down in our boots or our shoes. So make sure that you've got a nice pair of pants on that come down long enough to cover the tops of your boots and shoes. The other thing to make sure is a lot of us have jeans or pants that are frayed along the back edge from dragging on the ground because they're a little bit too long. Make sure that you don't wear something like that because those just make a great fire starter and you'll be welding someday and wondering how come your leg is starting to get warm and you'll realize that those back little that fringe of that fabric caught on on the back of your jeans there and such. So make sure you don't wear a pair of jeans that are frayed or have any uh, loose threads or uh, objects like that on them. So take care and make sure that you've got yourself properly clothed before you start doing welding work. It's also important when we do welding that we have the proper footwear. Make sure that you get a pair of boots or shoes that comfortably fit your foot and protect yourself from any kind of hot objects that might come off of the work table. So a pair of suede or leather shoes is what we generally are going to want to have if we're going to do some welding. Now some places require the use of steel-toed boots. So if you're required to wear steel-toed boots in your work environment, by all means get a pair of those that fit and that are comfortable. So not all workplaces require steel toe shoes um, and some people like to wear them and some people don't like to wear them. Uh, there's many aspects uh, where they get uncomfortable but after wearing them for a while uh, but my recommendation is is to get yourself a comfortable pair of work boots or shoes uh, preferably with steel toes to protect your feet in case there's any kind of hot objects or any kind of falling objects that come off of the work table and land on your toes. So make sure that you take care of your feet. It's tough to do welding uh, sitting in a chair and not being able to move around the shop in an uh, efficient manner because you broke your foot because something fell off the work table uh, and you didn't have a pair of steel toe shoes or some type of footwear that will protect against that type of instance. So please make sure that you get the right footwear. Not only will it protect the top of your foot, but it will also be comfortable to walk around and to wear for a good portion of the day. So once again, thanks for joining us in the Longevity Learning Lab. Hopefully you've learned something about safety today that you found useful and helpful in your welding environment. So come back often and check out what's going on here, hang out for a while, and see what we have to offer. So we're hoping that your time here is spent is useful and meaningful, and we hope that you get something out of it. So we look forward to seeing you back here at the Longevity Learning Lab in the near future. Have a great day.